Okay, so I need to update my uh, firmware on the Mazda Miata. There was a new firmware that came out for uh, Echo Fix. Some people reported uh, they make a phone call in CarPlay or uh, Android Auto, and there would be an echo, like people would hear an echo. And this is supposed to fix it. I've tried it and I don't have a problem with it, but I'm still just gonna do the update anyways. Now, the difference between this update and my initial video showing you how to install all the hardware and software is this is a single file. So there's no two file, fail safe, and then, you know, the installation package. It's just one file that you upload and it goes to it. And uh, if you're doing that CarPlay, uh, like the USB hub installation, you can jump straight to this single file as long as you're like version, uh, let's see. If you're above version 29.00.000, you can go straight to this newest firmware. You don't have to do the whole two file thing. So the newest firmware is 70.00.335C, which is the phone call echo fix. So to get started, grab a USB drive, plug it in. I already have one plugged in. <laughs> But um, this is a Google Drive folder I have set up for the North America firmwares. Um, I don't know the whole procedures on all the other regions, if there's anything that's different for them. So I haven't included them. I'm just including the one that I know how to do and the one that I've done. So go ahead and go in here. In this folder, I have all the stuff that you need, even if you're just doing like a, a basic firmware update or if you're doing the whole installation for the hub. And there's also a checksum utility in here. You can use a check the actual uh, uh, hashes on the file to make sure it's not corrupt. So go ahead and download whatever you need here. There's a readme file. I suggest reading it. I have some valuable information in there on how you want to actually go about and do this uh, properly without breaking something. So here are the files you'll be using when you're doing this process. This is the file, the update file itself. You'll be putting this onto your USB drive and updating it in the car. This is the only file that goes on the USB drive. So make sure your USB drive is formatted and ready. So this one is the checksum utility. This is optional. This is just used to check to make sure your file is not corrupt after downloading. This here is the hash values. This has the hash values for pretty much all the old and new uh, firmwares. And this is the readme file. So this here goes over some important information that you need to know before even doing this. Uh, one, it says, remember, if your version is underneath 29.00.00, you need to upgrade to 3100A before even upgrading to this firmware version. There is a link to uh, the Google Drive folder that has this file in it if you need to upgrade to it. The upgrade for this firmware is completely different from this one. This one you need to install the um, failsafe package first and then the reinstallation package. 7335C is only one file. This file contains both the failsafe and the reinstall. So you can see right here I go over that. Then if you want to check hash values, it's going to be through this right here. And if you're doing this on Mac, I really don't recommend you do this on Mac. Find a Windows PC, borrow one, you know, dig in your closet, find one from like 2010 and do it that way. There's a lot of problems people have with Mac OS and how it writes the file and it formats the drive and all that. So try to get a Windows PC if you can. Uh, one guy said he used a Chromebook and it worked fine, so if you have a Chromebook, you can try that. But if you're having errors and problems with it, it's most likely going to be your problem. Now, if you want to check the hash of the file, you can just uncheck these here. Drag your file in here. It's going to check it. I have the values right here. And you can see it starts with CEF, ends with 501. Starts with 387, ends with 3C3. That way you know this file is one-to-one -one perfect match, no corruption. 
So that's all you need to know to get ready to have this on your drive and get it ready for the car. Hope that helps anyone with this process. Okay, now, like deja vu, I've done this before. Uh, I've only printed out the one sheet, one page steps here, so hopefully everything goes well. So ignition off, make sure you take out your SD card if you have navigation. Uh, someone asked me how to update the navigation stuff. I don't know how to do that. I have a club trim, so I, I don't even have that option for navigation. So um, if I find someone with a car that has it and I can make a video on it, I'll try and do that, but I don't know how to do it. It says, after that, make sure your phone, you turn your Bluetooth off, you don't have it connected, you know, any auxiliary stuff unplugged, you know, nothing plugged into it. That's what they're wanting you to do. And you need to put the ignition switch to accessory mode. So push the start engine button once without depressing the clutch for manual or the brake pedal for automatic. So once there, this is going to pop up. And it says wait for this to do its thing. Okay, now we want to go to AM FM radio. Go there, I'm gonna do this. And then, now that we're in here, we wanna press the music plus favorite and push down the mute at the one time. So, music, favorite, so the music note, the star, and the push down the volume for two seconds. Ian, your car's fault. Go, go, get out of here. Now we get into this screen here. And, remember, use a touch screen or command knob, then put three on the test screen and enter clear. So we hit three, then we did enter, I'm gonna hit clear. And input two, do enter, and then clear. So we did two, enter and clear, switch the ignition to off and close all doors including bonnet and lift gate. Lock the vehicle with remote and keep the remote transmitter five meters from the vehicle and wait three minutes. This will put the CMU into sleep mode. So we're gonna go ahead and double hit that twice to go off. Now, you're gonna walk away, close all your doors and everything. And uh, for three minutes, make sure you have your little key five meters away. Let's do that now. So I'm sitting here, and this is a, I guess an important step to do to make sure your CMU, CMU goes into sleep mode even though it didn't have any problems clearing things. You wanna go for three minutes away from the car. So I just had a little timer pull up and uh, it's all good. So that is this step right here. Switch ignition off, which is two button pushes, close all doors, and uh, oh, lock the vehicle, vehicle locks itself, and keep it five meters away for three minutes. Okay, so I unlocked the car with the key, got back in. Now we want to insert our USB stick, which we have right here. Wait, no, 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 not yet. Unlock the vehicle and go to ignition mode. So no pressing down the brake or the clutch, just hit the button once. Let this do its thing. So insert the USB stick. I don't think it matters. I'm just gonna use the bottom USB here. Do that. And then once you get back to the diagnostic screen, so music note, Favorites button and mute down for two seconds. Awesome. So, and now we want to type in 99. And we want to hit enter. It's going to search the USB stick for an update. Now, the important thing about the 335C update 
is you don't have a fail safe. There's only one thing you have to install, and it's the reinstallation package. So we're just going to hit search. It's going to search the USB drive. So now you see we're on 7000100, and it has a reinstallation package for 7000335. So what you want to do, go to this one. And if you read this here, it says failsafe installation. You want to skip this. You don't do the failsafe with this. You select a reinstallation package, like so. You hit install. And now it's going to prepare the update. Now, an important thing on here is this can take anywhere from 25, I think my first time I did it, it took like 25 minutes to 40 minutes, they say. So to avoid accessory power being turned off automatically, what you want to do is press the clutch pedal or the brake pedal if you have an automatic. Approximately, uh, I would probably say just be safe like every 20 minutes to reset the power safe function. So, you know, let's go ahead. I'm going to hit my clutch now, like so. That lets it know, hey, don't turn off. And then go set a timer for 20 minutes. Set a timer for 20 minutes. So now my phone has set a timer for 20 minutes. It will remind me to come back in here and push my clutch if I have a manual transmission or push my brake if I have an automatic. So there's an interesting note. I don't, I don't think this came up uh, last time. It says once every 20 minutes. Now, in this piece of paper here, it says every 25 minutes. So I don't know. I always did five minutes earlier just to be, I don't know, cautious but this says you can do the clutch pedal the brake pedal or you can do uh, the driver's door as well so I guess if you have to get in to press the clutch pedal you already open the door unless you're sitting in the car the whole time but uh that's interesting Okay, so my 20 minute timer just went off, so I'm gonna go press my clutch in, or you could do the door, but I'm gonna do the clutch. So it's at 95%, 20 minutes went by. I'm gonna do the clutch, even though it says you can open and shut the door, I'm just gonna do it the way that I've done it last time. So 95% done, 20 minutes has gone by, and I'll think I'll have to press it again, so we're uh, all good. I'm gonna let this go ahead and finish up. Okay, so now that's done doing the install. I'm going to go right back to these instructions and it says Message to restart the vehicle will be shown a short time after the update has reached 100%. Do not restart. I don't know what this means. I don't know if it's like a translation error, but um, it says do not restart. Just switch ignition off without pressing brake or clutch pedal. So I don't know what they mean by don't restart. The car was never on to begin with, so basically what it's telling you to do is press the start stop button twice without touching any brakes or clutches or anything. Just hit this button twice. And then that's it. Let's go ahead and remove our USB stick, close all the doors, all the hood, trunk, everything. Then you want to is it raining? Starting to. So you want to go and take your key five meters away for three minutes, puts it in sleep mode, and then we'll come back. So um, hurry up and I shut all my doors because it's starting to rain a little bit. But you can see here on the instructions it says remove USB stick, close all doors, lock the vehicle with a remote, keep the transmitter five meters away or more from the vehicle for three minutes. Then we'll come back, unlock the vehicle, put it into accessory mode. You do that by hitting the start stop button once without pressing any brakes or clutch pedals. Wait one minute for the system to um, initialize and confirm the software version within the Mazda uh, software settings. So we'll go ahead and wait those three minutes and then we'll check it out. So now I unlock the vehicle 
and then I'm going to put it in accessory mode. So press the start stop button once. Don't press any pedals. Now it says wait for the system to boot up fully. So should be good to go here. Now what you want to do is go into settings on here. You want to go up to the top. Am I stupid? Can't remember how to do this. There we go. All the way to the right to system. Sorry if you can't really see this. Go to about version information. Now you'll see our OS version is 70.00.335 North America. And the fail safe version is also 70.00.335 because this single file contains your fail safe and your reinstallation in one file now. So just go ahead and hit OK on there. And then pretty much done. You can switch your ignition off, put your SD card back in, and um, turn everything back on if you have an SD card and make sure it works. And um, if your uh, GPS doesn't like initialize, go drive around for like a minute. Like, uh, I think it's something like 15, 30 miles an hour you have to reach. Then your uh, GPS will start being more accurate and locking on. So if your GPS doesn't work, don't freak out. So that's all done. Let me go back home. Make sure our uh, Android Auto CarPlay still works. So I'll plug in my phone. If it doesn't start up, hold down your home button. And then you'll go into uh, Android Auto, our CarPlay. So, yep, update worked. Super easy. You don't have to mess with two files anymore, so it's great. So this is firmware version 70.00335C, and this is the process you go through to update pretty much any of the Mazda newer entertainment units. So hope that helped anyone that had any problems. Um, if you're adding Android Auto or CarPlay into your uh, Miata, you can go straight to this version of uh, firmware if you're above version 29.00.000 something like that. I'll have it in the readme file for you so make sure you read the readme files on the Google Drive. They're helpful and they'll help you get started and let you know what you need to do. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, hope this helped anyone and um, stay tuned for more videos slowly on the Miata, you know, I maybe upload twice a month, so <laughs> just hold on.